Tenderfoot Rank Requirement 3D. Demonstrate proper care, sharpening, and use of the knife, saw, and axe. Describe when each should be used. For pocket knife safety and care, as well as sharpening, review Scout Rank Requirement number 5. Use a camp saw for most outdoor woodcutting. The blades of folding saws close into their handles, much like the blades of pocket knives. A bow saw has a curved metal frame that holds the blade in place. Clearing branches and brush from a hiking trail is a conservation service project that you might do with your patrol or troop. To saw a branch from a tree, make an undercut first, then saw from the top down. The undercut prevents the falling branch from stripping bark off the trunk. A clean cut close to the trunk won't leave an unsightly hat rack that might snag the clothing or packs of travelers on the trail. Cut saplings level with the ground so that there are no stumps to trip over. To saw a loose piece of wood, brace it against the chopping block, saw horse, or other solid support. Use long, smooth strokes and let the weight of the saw pull the blade into the wood. Safe saw use. Sheath a saw when it's not in use. Carry a saw with the blade turned away from your body. Replace dull blades. Sharp saws are easier to use and to control. Use care when passing a saw to another person, or better yet, set it down and let the other person pick it up. Always wear gloves and protective eyewear. Don't cut any trees or branches alive or dead without permission. Don't allow a saw blade to cut into the ground. Soil and rocks will quickly dull the teeth. Don't leave a saw lying around camp. Taking care of saws. Treat every saw with the same respect you give your pocket knife. Protect the blade of the bow saw with the plastic sheath that came with the blade. Close folding saws when they aren't in use and store them in a tent or under a dining fly. Protect the blade of a bow saw with a sheath made from a piece of old garden hose cut to the length of the blade. Slit one side of the hose, fit it over the blade, and hold it in place with duct tape or cord. The teeth on saw blades are set, bent, so that they will cut into thin grooves in the wood and then rake out the shavings in between. Even with the best care, the teeth will slowly lose their set and their ability to cut easily through the wood. Saw blades should be replaced when they become dull. Take along a spare blade when you have a lot of cutting to do. The axe has a long and colorful history in America's forests. Pioneers used axes to cut trails and roads through the wilderness. Settlers chopped down trees to make way for gardens and fields. With their axes and related tools, people hewed boards and beams for frontier buildings. Early scouts often carried axes to camp for preparing firewood, sharpening wooden tent stakes, and shaping spars for signal towers, bridges, and other pioneering projects. Today, scouts most often use hand axes to complete conservation projects on trails and in campgrounds. Occasionally, they also use them to split wood into kindling. As with all wood tools, handling an axe safely requires good judgment and practice. Safe tools. An axe must be in good condition. If the head is loose, the blade dull, or the handle damaged, don't use it. Bring an unsafe tool to the attention of your scout leaders and either help repair it or retire it from duty. Safe shoes, eyewear, and gloves. Always wear sturdy boots when you're chopping with an axe. Your boots may not stop a blade from hitting your foot, but they can limit the extent of an injury. Safe work area. You must have plenty of room to swing an axe. Check your clearance by holding the axe at arm's length by its head. Slowly turn in a circle. Remove any brush or branches that the handle touches, as well as any above you that might snag when swinging the axe. Be certain other people stay at least 10 feet away while you're cutting. In a long-term camp where you'll be using lots of firewood, rope off an axe yard large enough to provide the space you need to work. Enter the yard only to chop and saw wood. Clean up chips, bark, and other cutting debris when you're done. 
safe technique. Before doing any cutting, get your feet set and your body balanced. Stay relaxed. Pay attention to the work in front of you and be aware of what's going on around you too. Chopping branches off a log is called limbing. Stand on the side of the log opposite the branch you want to remove. Chop close to the base of the branch, driving the axe into the underside of the branch. Keep the log between yourself and your cuts. If your aim is off and the axe skips on a branch, the blade will hit the log rather than your leg. Cutting through a log is known as bucking. Begin by holding the axe with one hand near the head and the other close to the knob of the handle. Lifting the head above your shoulder, then slide your hands together to the knob and swing the bit into the log. Let the falling weight of the axe head do most of the work. Slide your hand back down the handle to the head. Lift the axe and swing it again. Aim your blows so that you cut a V-shaped notch as wide as the top of the log is thick. Splitting firewood, cutting it lengthwise, is best done on a chopping block. A piece of log that provides a flat, stable surface. A poor swing of the axe will send the bit into the block rather than toward your feet. To split a large chunk of wood, stand it upright on the chopping block and drive the axe into the end of it. If the wood doesn't split, remove the axe before swinging it again. Don't swing an axe with a piece of wood stuck on the bit. When the axe does go through the wood, the bit should hit the chopping block rather than the ground. Split a small stick with the contact method by placing the bit against the stick. Lift the stick and axe together and bring them down together against the chopping block, forcing the bit into the wood. Twist the axe to break apart the pieces. Safe carrying. Place a sheath over the axe blade whenever you're not using it. Carry the axe at your side with your hand at the top of the handle near the head. Making sure that it is well clear of the ground. The blade should be turned away from the body. If you stumble, toss the axe away as you fall. Never carry an axe on your shoulder where the axe bit could be dangerously close to your neck and head. Safe handling. Give an axe to another person by holding the handle with the axe head down. Pass it with the bit turned away from both of you. When the other person has a grip on the handle, he or she should say thank you. That's your signal to release your hold. Safe storage. Sheath your axe and store it under a dining fly or in a tent. Sharpening the axe. Keep your axe sharp with a mill bastard file that is 8 or 10 inches long. The lines across the face of a file are its teeth. They angle away from the point or the tang. A sharp file will be flat gray, not shiny. A silvery shine means that a file has broken teeth and won't work very well. Wear leather gloves to protect your hands as you sharpen an axe with the file. Make a knuckle guard by drilling a small hole with a 3 inch square of leather, plywood, or an old inner tube. Slip the hole over the tang of the file and hold the guard in place with your file handle. You can buy a handle at a hardware store or make one from a piece of wood. Brace the axe head on the ground between two wooden pegs or tent stakes and a log about 6 inches in diameter. Another scout can help hold the axe steady. Place the file on the edge of the blade and push it into the bit. Use enough pressure that you feel the file cutting the axe metal. Alright scouts, now go get signed off by your scoutmaster. If you like these videos, please show your support by liking, commenting, and sharing them with other scouts.